The geopolitical tensions between the Communist Soviet Union and the United States gave rise to the Navy initiating the Naval Fighter Experimental Program, VFX. Grumman Aerospace Corporation won the contract, giving the Navy the most advanced technical fighter in the world, the F-14 Tomcat. I spent my life and my joy of uh, my Navy career flying the mighty Tomcat. I first met it when my father was a test pilot at uh, Grumman. So when I was in high school, I went out and went to Grumman at Bethpage, and we and they had a full mock-up of the F-14. And I saw it in the special lighting and hangar and everything they were trying to sell the airplane, et cetera, and I said, holy shit. Wow, what a great airplane. I, it had, the Tomcat is unique. It has a presence, it has panache. And when you see that airplane, you know it's something like that has never been around and probably won't be around again. So I had the joy of flying it for 24 years and wound up being the high time, the high time Tomcat pilot with almost 5,000 hours in it. Dave Culley, call sign Possum. Got that call sign at the Oak Club one night, another long story. Uh, I had about 1,100 carrier landings in the Tomcat and about 42 or 4,300 hours. Pretty sure I'm the high time guy in the world, maybe an Iranian, maybe uh, Snort would challenge me on that, we'll see. We'll break out logbooks one of these days. And then, uh, uh, let's see, Darth. Darth would probably claim he had more, but he logged 2.5s in the FCLP pattern with students, so I'm gonna discount him. You know, what I really liked about the Tomcat, you know, I figured out, okay, I don't have the eyes to be a pilot. It was a two position aircraft. And obviously, you know, when it got into the strike role, I still think it's the best strike fighter in the world. And of course, I'm biased to the Tomcat. I was never a big Hornet guy. Uh, but, you know, you'd, you'd really work together, get that crew coordination going that we all talked about. And once you had that, you could make things happen. When you can anticipate what the guy in the front or the back was doing and you knew exactly what was going on. And you know, going back to Top Gun, that was one of the great things. You know, you've been flying with the same guy, you're just really tuned up, flying every day and uh, real challenging flights. Hi, uh, I'm Roger Box, and uh, I checked out in the F-14. And uh, to start this off, I'll tell you that I was the first commanding officer at Top Gun. I was not the originator, but I was the first commanding officer. I helped uh, transition it uh, against uh, a lot of forces in the Navy because we were too successful and it looked like we were having fun. And God knows anytime you're having fun, you're doing something wrong by somebody. We were having fun and we flew the little stripped down A4s to simulate MiGs and uh, the program was very successful. One of the reasons that we became a command and I became a commanding officer was that Top Gun, as organized and ran by my predecessors and continued by myself, was a very successful program. So way back whenever I got selected to go to Top Gun and it's a pretty good deal. First day, I don't know if you know Wizard McCabe. Wizard's the XO and he goes, hey, by the way, before anybody leaves, we've got a writer that's gonna do an article about guys going through Top Gun, a crew. Who wants to do it? And after being a savvy guy, knowing that, hey, public affairs, you can't win and sure can lose, everybody avoided eye contact. So finally, Wizard goes, all right, this is for California Magazine. This kid, or this guy's name was Ehud Yanni, is gonna write this thing, Israeli guy. Um, so West Coast, you guys are doing it. Who's gonna do it? Again, nobody, nobody volunteered. And then Wizard goes, hey, Street calls you SoCal, how come? I said, well, I went to Corona Mar High School and UCLA, and he goes, you guys are doing it. So we ended up doing this thing, talking to this guy every day. Comes out okay, and uh, actually having the movie created over an article. And there's like four things that are real in the movie, as you know, and the rest is history. Back in 1980-something, a long time ago, I was in the RAG, the Fleet Replacement Squadron for the F-14. And uh, I was one of a bunch of students that were kind of hung up in training. And they came out and interviewed a bunch of us because they wanted some real guys in the movie like we were real, we were students in the F-14 RAG. And I was the only one of the students that was tall, dark, and handsome, okay? And so I was selected to be in the movie, which uh, I thought was you know, pretty cool, because I knew nothing about movies. I'm just you know, a, a Tomcat guy trying to you know, figure my way out and fly the airplane, blah, blah, blah. So I'm on the set, this is my job. I'm on the set for six weeks, and that is my job full time, all the time. And what was very interesting was all the cast and crew wanted to kind of hang around with us after the set, after the shoot and all that good stuff, because they wanted to be just like us, okay? I had zero hours in the airplane at the time. 
Um, I kind of knew how to put my flight suit on and kind of looked the part, but I didn't know much. But the actors and the actresses, they were really into us because we were real, we were genuine, we would do all this stuff. And the four of us students that were uh, in the movie, we kind of would get together and kind of go, hey, you know, if we don't tell them, they won't know. We might be ace of the base and all that good stuff. So we walked around that set like we were somebody, like we were special, like we were, you know, all this and that. And but then we were invited to the premiere and we sat down and watched the movie for the first time. And that was the first time we'd seen the story. We walked out of the film like, wow, we, we somebody, because this was really cool. All the stuff that they shot in all these different, uh, just different locations around San Diego, different scenes, none of them done at the same time. Uh, when it all came together, we were like, oh man, this is really cool. And what was very interesting was, you know, that day back in 1985, which turned into an 86 release, um, I knew every time that movie came on for the next 30 years, because every time it was on TV, every time it was anywhere, people were knocking on my door, saw your movie last night. And I'm like, yeah, my movie. I'm in the back row looking with my shades on and just blending in. But uh, it was pretty cool to be able to say that, you know, hey, I was a part of that movie that was really amazing. But uh, three years later, I was uh, offered the opportunity to, to attend the Top Gun class for real. And uh, I'm telling you what I thought was the best six weeks of my career, you know, while we were making the movie, because that was fun, that was cool, you know, it was cool. Um, but going through the class was intense. It was the best flying that I'd ever been a part of. Uh, all day long, we were just, all we did was think tactically, you know, in the books, in the theory, in discussions, jump in the airplane and turn that theory into reality. Uh, going through the class, I was like, wow, this is, this is the, the science of fighter aviation. I mean, it really gets down into the, 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 the nuts and bolts and, and some really cool stuff. And uh, when I left the class, going back to the squadron, I felt like, man, now I really have something to offer all those around me, because I know a lot more. You know, for the next 30 years, uh, I got to share stories about one, being in the movie, and two, being in the class for real. And, um, you know, it, it, was, it was, you know, very rewarding. Grumman had a history of providing combat-proven carrier fighters for the United States Navy, which they named after cats. The Tomcat was the last of the great cats that spanned over 66 years protecting the fleet. There were only six naval aviators who had the distinct notoriety of flying all the Grumman cats during their naval service career. At 96 years young, 